So hey guys, today we're going to be going over XYZ as a mechanic in general and going over some nuances that also I, I suppose make XYZ's kind of like, well I guess until Pearly came around I suppose they kind of got firecrapped by all the other types to an extent because they already got hit by the, the power creep I guess, you know, well with the new kind of busted fusion synchro whatever. Uh, cards that now kind of exist. If we just focus on XYZ as a uh, mechanic, the very fundamental idea is that we take two plus monsters and we turn them into an XYZ uh, monster essentially. So let's say we have Burner Visor here. This requires us to use two level four monsters and what happens to those monsters is they become XYZ materials for the XYZ monsters. And usually XYZ monsters, like, here, let's see, does this, wait, this doesn't even have a detach effect, but generally an XYZ monster will have, like, a detach effect. So it's like, maybe detach uh, one of the XYZ materials on this card, and then you can uh, negate a monster, destroy a spell, trap, something like that, right? Sometimes they're quick effects, sometimes they're not. Doesn't really have any relevance, aside from like, maybe how old the card is. But yeah, that is, at the very fundamental level, what an XYZ monster is, but there is so much more uh, depth to this, just randomly. So, let's take, I guess, we'll use Infernal Flame Banshee here. So, alright. I First off, don't think there is a single card that I know of, at least, that stops your opponent from detaching materials from your uh, XYZ cards. But, technically, this detaches for cost. So, there, there are cards that detach for cost, and those that uh, detach for effect. Does this have any relevance to anything? Almost none. This only matters for, like, exactly tier limit. So, for example, here, this detaches for cost, so it doesn't trigger a tier limit. If this detached for effect, it would uh, trigger a tier limit. Like, Redoer or G Gigantic Sprite, those both detach for effect for whatever reason. So, uh, there you go. And... I guess that somewhat matters sometimes. But there are a bunch of qualities about XYZ monsters that are different from other monsters. So if we were to go with, for example, Sword Soul, noticeably, it is not possible to attach a token as material. So you cannot use it, even though, let's say, it is a level 4 monster and there's no restriction, right? You cannot use a token to XYZ summon with, which you can actually do with, for example, Sword Soul. So, Sword Soul, Moe Effect, Summon, and then you can summon um, Chi Zhao, and you're perfectly fine. You're, you are chillin'. But then, uh, if we go to literally every other type, they can all make usage out of tokens. So, Ritual, you can, you know, just... Uh, I believe there was... Um, one ritual deck, yeah. It was Libromancer, which summons like some tokens for you to tribute and technically, I guess, ritual summon your Libromancer card. So that that's a thing. Link monsters, some can use tokens, some can't, but you can just link a token off into Link Spider anyways. And then Link Spider is an effect monster, so you can use tokens for Link summoning. Fusions, uh, you can as well, right? So. There are, like, certain requirements on your fusions, and there are fusions that tokens meet, like typing, attack, defense, or ju just being a normal monster. Uh, yeah, so for example, Light Dark, uh, if it is a dragon token or something, then there are, like, dragon synchros, or not synchro, dragon fusion monsters you'd be able to make. So all that jazz right and then synchro you can just 
use them as if they were a normal monster. I'm pretty sure it never asks you for like an effect monster ever when you synchro summon, unlike maybe, I guess mostly Link. Yeah, so XYZ kind of gets shafted because they have literally no play with tokens. There's nothing you can do with a token with XYZ decks. So yeah, you get a little shafted there. But aside from that, there is also the fact that detaching for material here, obviously th this is a cost and this is not very stoppable. But technically if you prevent the effect from activating, I guess, the cost doesn't matter if you can pay it if you cannot activate the effect to begin with. For example, in case of Flame Banshee, having no targets in deck to add, th then you wouldn't be able to detach. So yeah, following that up, we have Macrocosmos, so if we have Macrocosmos here, right? If we detach Infernal Flame Banshee, obviously we can always detach, but if we detach, the card will be banished, right? Because Macrocosmos, of course, says, well, this card is face up on the field, and uh, any card sent to uh, the graveyard is banished instead. If we have instead Fissure, th this doesn't work either, you know, or I mean, this doesn't work. Any monster sent to the graveyard is mashed instead, because for some reason, XYZ materials, did you know, actually are not considered monsters while they are attached to Infernal Flame Banshee, but they will be considered monsters when they hit, well, the, the, the graveyard kind of, not really. Like, while they're in the graveyard, after they get detached, yes, they are monsters, obviously, right? But when they are detaching, they are not considered a monster and can get into the graveyard and slip past the dimensional fissure because it says any monster sent to the graveyard is banished instead. So they are just considered cards or XYZ material. Why? And how are you ever supposed to know this? No clue. To throw in another one, we have uh, Misaya, I believe, right? So Misaya here says, any card sent to the graveyard is banished instead, except for monster cards. So you're telling me if we have anti-human intelligence, Misaya, alongside dimensional fissure, this would not banish uh, any of the material off of your flame banshee. And of course, it's not just detaching, just to be clear. So if we were to, for example, write Geki Break, Infernal Flame Banshee with two uh, XYZ materials, the only thing that gets banished is Infernal Flame Banshee. Uh, the the material here on your uh, Infernal Flame Banshee would not, in fact, get banished. And I can't really explain this ruling to you, it's just how it is. So, yep. It is what it is, I guess. Epic. And this also makes it so XYZ monsters in general just have another disadvantage. So. Well, just with having XYZ material. So, the big thing about XYZ monsters that make them weaker is their effects in general are still like the same as any other, I guess, kind of extra deck monster, right? So if we go here to, well, actually I, we don't have to use the filter. If we go to here and then we search Twin Twister, right? So, not Twin Twister, actually, wait. What, what was it called? Twister, Twister, no. Tornado, right. We go Tornado Dragon here. Once per turn, quick effect, you can detach one material from this card, then target one spell trap on field, destroy it, right? This is like an XYZ monster. If we instead go to like a typical Synchro monster, uh, just whatever, whatever the equivalent would be for this, for Synchro. Well, I'm not really sure actually what the equivalent would be. So just destroy spell traps, right? Well, actually, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I remember now. Super Heavy Samurai Saru Tobi, I believe, right? Okay, so... Stealth Ninja? No. Sorutobi. Yeah. 
So this effect, same thing, they are both quick effects. And these are, well, this one is not hard once per turn or once per chain. Is it? No, it is hard. It is soft once per turn. Oh, never mind. This is also soft once per turn, right? Yeah. So th this is pretty much the equivalent, I guess, right? So destroy a uh, spell trap specifically when your opponent controls or what? No, it's just on either field. So you can destroy a spell trap on the field. And that, that, that's about it. That That's what both of these guys essentially do. The difference being Sarutobi can do this like as many times as it wants. Like if we go to turn 50, Sarutobi will be able to destroy 50 spell traps, assuming there are spell traps to destroy. Tornado Dragon here will only be able to destroy two. So because you have to detach material, that, that can be like a pretty significant difference in uh, the grind game. So another small issue with XYZ monsters here. I guess Pearly kind of works weird, so they don't have like to deal with this. So for example, with E Pearly Beauty, we're looking at just the first effect. Once per turn, you can target one effect monster your opponent controls, uh, negate its effects until the end of this turn. This is a quick effect if this card has Pearly Pretty Memory as material, which it probably does. So if it does, you can just negate your opponent's uh, uh, effect monster every single turn, essentially. Also soft once per turn, weirdly enough, but yep. Yeah. This kind of just works like this now, I guess. But if we, in general, are looking at XYZ monsters, that, that's kind of how it goes. So, uh, another thing, if we go to Pendulum monsters, th th this will be relevant, I promise. So, let's go deeper, I guess, and go to DD specifically. So, if you guys know how pendulum monsters work, essentially how pendulum monsters work is that uh, when they are on the field, they will typically go to the extra deck instead of being sent to the graveyard. And th the conditions are pretty specific to an extent, but yeah. Let's see, I believe you can re still return them to the hand, and they do not go to the extra deck. If you do shuffle, they still go back to uh, the deck as well, if you shuffle a card back. But if you were to send to the graveyard, or destroy, or use uh, pendulum monsters as material, all of these have to be by effect and can't be by cost, because uh, they technically cannot be like sent to the graveyard for cost, because they can't be sent to the graveyard, if that makes sense. So the cost cannot be paid, I guess, and you cannot pay use them to pay for cost because they, they don't get sent. So uh, focusing back up, okay. So if we were to use them as material as well, if we were to link summon, these guys go to the extra deck base up if they are on the field, right? Fusion summon, synchro summon, doesn't matter what you really use them for. Uh, most extra deck summoning mechanics send things to the graveyard, right? Except for XYZ, anyway. So if we actually were to make Wave King Caesar, or... Uh, well, I guess it's probably Marksman King Tell. We can detach, and this will put DD monsters into the graveyard for you. And if you were to link off or remove Caesar... Uh, with just any means, this will put your Pendulum DD monsters into the graveyard. And th this just works in general with pens, but th this is really utilized a lot in uh, DD combos, so. The idea here is primarily with Griffin, where it's really uh, exemplified, I guess. But there are certain Pendulum effects that require your, uh, well, not pendulum effects, just pendulum monsters with effects that trigger relating to the graveyard. Either like summoning something else from the graveyard, summoning itself, or you just want to trigger it by special summoning it. And you can special summon it, um, your card from the graveyard with like, for example, a Selene. So that is pretty noticeable with um, specifically Pendulum Magician.
But with DD, your the primary thing is that we're going to uh, essentially let's say we have Copernicus. That's the simplest way to do this. If we were to normal summon Copernicus, we can then special summon Griffin. Then we link these guys off for Gilgamesh, and then uh, Gilgamesh will set scales. And then this allows you to summon both Copernicus and Griffin, allowing you to make a rank for Caesar. And Griffin, of course, has this uh, monster effect here, where if it is a uh, special summon specifically from the graveyard, you can add one DD card from your deck to your hand, which can be used to search Headhunt right? Griffin first needs to, of course, be in the graveyard for you to special summon it, and it is a pendulum, so the way to do this is to, you can technically foolish burial Griffin, or you can just use it simply to make an XYZ monster with, right? So, like Caesar. And then we just link off Caesar, or just remove it by whatever means necessary. And then Griffin will be in the graveyard for us to uh, special summon back, which we can do with, like, Flame King Genghis, High Flame King Genghis, you know, Big Genghis, Small Genghis, and then uh, there is also Ragnarok effect. Specifically, the Pendulum effect. So, all this just to bring back Griffin, essentially. And while we're here, might as well do the Pendulum Magician example. So, the thing you might want to do is trigger... Black Fang, potentially. So, Black Fang has this effect. If this card is destroyed by battle or card effect, you can target one Dark Spellcaster monster in your graveyard, special summon it. So, th this just works, I guess, right? You can do this. And then there is also, um, specifically, you might want to. Well,. Actually, yeah, I think this is the only one that really cares about this. XYZ, and then link off XYZ to get stuff into material. I think it's just Black Fang Magician that cares. I don't think anything else actually super cares. But there is also uh, the idea of if you really wanted to, like... But let's say this actually comes up. It probably won't. Perform a Pell Pendulum Sorcerer needs to specifically be special summoned to trigger its effect. So maybe your opponent has somehow s stops you from like Pendulum Summoning or something. So instead, what we might be able to do is we might be able to XYZ with this into like some rank 4. Attempt to make Zeus, our opponent stops that. This goes to the graveyard, right? Because we XYZ summoned with it. Then we can Selene this back and then trigger the destroy two cards you control. Add two cards and that will probably be combo to some extent. And it'll probably uh, get us places, right? So, pretty cool, I guess. XYZ is the only extra deck mechanic that you can actually utilize to get your uh, pendulum monsters into the graveyard from um, the field, essentially, then. Which is how that works, I guess. So, that that's cool. And let's see. Oh yeah, every single XYZ monster has pretty much, well, almost every XYZ monster, I, I suppose, threatens Zeus. So yeah, there's that. And in terms of just making Zeus, I believe pretty much every single rank of monster has some way to make Zeus activatable more than once. Like, if we're just looking at, like, levels and not necessarily, like, every deck, because not every deck has good, like, a, a good Zeus line, right? Just straight up, not not every deck has that. But if we were just to go over some levels, right? One, two, and I, I believe three. I'll have the option to go into Dannard, so you make literally pretty much any rank one, two, or three XYZ monster. You can slap a downard onto it and then the downard will get you one more material on zeus if you were to just have two materials on a monster that would get you a three mat zeus right because it would be get putting itself like zeus on top of your uh, other xyz monster and also monster reborn effects are pretty bad have, have i mentioned that yet because 
you have cost that you can't pay if, even if you reborn these guys. And in case of like beauty, the, this just no longer is a quick effect if you were to monster reborn beauty. And also, uh, I guess worth mentioning as well is that uh, XYZ summons are like super weird, I suppose. So if we go to fusion monsters, so let, let's go with ninjas. So if we go to Mizen, right? Mizen actually does not fusion summon itself. It gets uh, special summoned from your extra deck by tributing the above cards you control, which is a contact fusion, which counts as uh, pro being properly summoned. But there are some uh, XYZ type shenanigans, notably with like Spriggan, I believe where your monsters, I believe, are not properly summoned. So if you were to, uh... Well, I'll figure out how to spell this eventually. Okay. So with Spriggan, you have the uh, field spell will go into here. This special summons a Spriggan XYZ monster from your extra deck, so... Th there's, like... There are ways to kind of, like, cheat out XYZs like this, and there's some, like... things like rank ups, where... It has to count as an XYZ summon, technically, which is funny, but it doesn't matter, because even though it counts as an XYZ summon, if you XYZ summon, like, an XYZ monster, they won't have materials when you summon them back from the graveyard anyway, so it's kind of, like, moot point, pointless, and there's not really that many good ways in general to uh, get XYZ materials back onto your uh, XYZ monsters. And uh, going back to this, though, kind of went on a tangent there. Uh... Rank 5s have ways into uh, Zeus specifically, right? Uh, they have ways to climb now. So, if we have, for example, it doesn't really matter what. Let's say, I don't know, Dragonic Hellbird, we can now go Hellbird into um, this guy. Full armored Dark Knight Lancer, and then on top of Lancer, we can just put a Zeus on here. There is also, of course, uh, my inability to spell. Gaia is spelled like this. We have, well, we already had Gaia Dragon, the Thunder Charger, anyways, but rank 5 or 6 XYZ monster you control that allows you to um, make Zeus with. Um, formats as well and then for uh rank sevens i believe there is one way to do this so if we use red eyes metal flare dragon there might be a way let's see um pain gainer i think Rank 8, 9, or 10. Dark XYZ monster. Yeah, I think rank 7 might be the only one that doesn't have, like, a super great Zeus line compared to the other decks here. But, yeah, whatever. There is one one line. But it's not, like, necessarily that good. I, I would argue it's pretty bad, actually. So, what we can do is we can make Odd Eyes, Rebellion, Dragon Overlord. And this allows us to XYZ summon on top of essentially itself, right? So if we do do that, this will get three mats. Uh, no, wait. Yeah, this gets three mats, and then you make Zeus on top of that, and that is a four mat Zeus. So, epic, I guess. And then for all of the higher ranks, like 8, 9, 10, or whatever, you have like pain gainer and stuff, so that works. And for uh, rank fours, the one you're you're probably going to be looking mostly to do is just the zodiac lines. So zodiac is just completely generic to make. Specifically, we start with like Chekanine, then we can go into Borbo, and that'll be good enough. And then we can just make Zeus on top of Borbo, and Borbo can attack directly, of course. So this allows you to actually ignore Avermax. Because Avermax only redirects if you're 
targeting a monster for an attack, not players. So, that, that's cool ruling over there for you guys. And, uh, yeah. Super consistently, you have ways to get into, I guess, a Zeus with pretty much every single rank. I think, like, just currently, like, every single rank of XYZ monster, you have a way into Zeus with, um, four mats. Are they necessarily the best? Maybe not, but hey, if it gets you there, it gets you there, I guess. And that, that's just going to do two board wipes, so good luck to anyone that has to deal with this, I suppose. And funnily enough, uh, Zeus having no hard work once per turn, it'd be comical if you saw like two Zeuses and one of them was just unaffected. And, and you could just, you know, use multiple Zeus effects. I don't know, does Zeus actually have to be a limited one? Hmm. I guess maybe. I don't think, for the most part, like, most decks would run more than one anyways, if it were at two. If it were at three, there might be, like, some some reason to do that. With, like, certain slow decks that are, like, somewhat floodgating you out, I guess. But, yeah. Uh, essentially, though, as a mechanic, XYZ is probably the worst mechanic out of all of the uh, extra deck summoning mechanics right now, as of currently. XYZ is probably the worst. But I guess if we're looking at just the way Curly does XYZ summons, it's actually not that bad. But only with uh, Pearly. Because Pearly is able to spam out bodies, and every single body can immediately go into an extra deck. Uh, XYZ monster and threaten Zeus with uh, Downer Zeus or just plain old Zeus. And that's pretty rough, honestly. Uh, there's also the fact that it also threatens like a bigger Zeus than usual. You, you're looking at maybe three or four activations, actually, of Zeus, so... Yeah. Wouldn't really want to be on the receiving end of that, but yeah. Aside from, I guess, Pearly, is there a, a good XYZ deck? Like, straight up? Is there, though? Like, pure XYZ? I, I think not. Or primarily XYZ focused. Yeah. I, I don't think so. So, uh, yeah. Th that's all I got for you guys today, and I'll uh, see you guys in the next video. Bye.